<laughs> hey, welcome to Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour, and today we are going to be spotlighting New Wave, the 80s, and especially WLIR, which was a radio station in New York during the 80s that played all of this New Wave stuff. So, I don't even know where to begin. I got like a loose outline of what I want to talk about, but I'm expecting cha-cha to carry the show tonight, yeah. because the 80s were her time. That's when she... <laughs> Shine. She thrived during these <laughs> '80s. She took uh, part in everything '80s. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and of course, we're, we're going to intertwine our own life story uh, through these '80s too, because we came of age in the '80s. We right. met during the '80s, right. and we uh, took part of everything there was. In yeah. the 80s. So, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, let's start from the beginning. So, okay. <laughs> Uh, where should we start? Uh, let's start with punk. How about that? Sure. And we're gonna no. Actually, we're gonna start before that. We're gonna give you the history of LIR. If you're not from the New York area, you will may not know what LIR is. But it was uh, the foremost radio station. Actually, the only radio station playing this music. The first radio station to play this kind of music, new wave, and it broke a lot of bands like U2, Prince. They they. Let me go back one step further. That there is now a new um, <laughs> documentary out yeah. about WLIR. Right. It was made by um, Ellen Lipschitz, I think was her name. <laughs> no, I forget the woman's name, but right. she was a Long Island uh, girl who grew up in the 80s, listened to this, and she made this documentary that's currently on Showtime. And we watched that and brought us back. And it's getting a lot of... Uh, People are dissing it, I, I'll have to say. A lot of people loved it, of course, but people are criticizing it, saying that it's taking too much credit, that it's oh, like, you I know, see. like it was before MTV, but it wasn't. MTV came out a year before, but they worked hand in hand, I would have to say. You can't give credit to LIR for MTV and vice versa. I think MTV came out first, right? And then LIR I came out. Is what? that true? I it's think true. it was the reverse. No. no. 1981 was MTV. 1982 was WLIR. Hmm. So we'll get into that whole thing. But uh, like I said, I want to start from the beginning. 1959, Long <laughs> Island, <laughs> if you will. Oh, if you Picture it, if can. you will, <laughs> that um, this was the first stereo radio station on Long Island. And it was called WLIR, right, and they Long played. Island. They it was that's what it was, Long Island Radio, LIR. Yeah. So and they played like show tunes and classical music, and it was coming to you high atop the Garden City Hotel. <laughs> it's WLIR, and now here's uh, <laughs> Ethel Merman with "Wash That Man Out of My Hair," right? So, <laughs> and this was '59. Oh, uh, I think <laughs> most of it was still farmland, uh, Long Island at this point, right? Well. Yeah, maybe. I guess it was the beach. Yeah, by right? 59, I like, think it was uh, populating. Okay. But um, yeah, everyone from the city moved out to Long Island, became the suburbs. Right. So anyway, fast, fast forward to 1971 Ooh. when they decided to switch from the classical music over to rock music. And uh, they started playing like progressive type music. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the Doobie Brothers, Grateful Dead, and all of this kind of stuff. Right. But there were yeah. so many stations like that right. already. And this was and a small station, right. so you know it was overpowered by uh, PLJ, and NEW, uh, all these uh, New yeah. York City radio right. stations. But it had its own little niche, I guess, for playing uh, you know, whatever it played. I don't know. I never actually listened to it back then. Right. So, But then the switch came in 1982. And actually, I'm, let me tell you the date, the exact date. I have it written down. Cha-cha. Lay it on me. What is it? I can't find oh. it. Somebody stole my notes. <laughs> uh, August 2nd, 1982. There it is. And I even know the first song that it ever played when Whoa. it switched over. It was Change by Killing Joke. Oh. Yes. And then I'm going to tell you the last song it played uh, when it went off the air. What? And then I get <gasps> that to the end there. Wow. I can't so, wait. Right. So before, let's. I want to go back a little bit further. <laughs> that in you know in the early seventies, you're it like was, a bad movie. <laughs> yeah, there's a flash forward, a flash back, a flash sideways. Exactly. It's just like I said, we're gonna wing it tonight. Normally, <laughs> I have a maybe a little outline or agenda, but tonight I was rushed, and uh, Chacha's giving me pressure. We're back in the seventies, right? So then punk rock came along, right. 1975. Ramones, right. Sex Pistols, Clash, 
great, great scene, right? But it was terrifying to the average person, <laughs> and they couldn't take it. So the man had to try and stamp out punk rock and make it pleasant for the average person, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when, at the end of the 70s, that's when New Wave came along. So it was... Okay. It was like watered down punk. It was like the man's version of punk that he said, all right, let's try and make it so we can sell albums and kids in the suburb suburbs will listen to it because no one was playing punk music. You know, that was totally underground, totally uh, violent and aggressive and too much for people to handle. I guess. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, because you couldn't hear punk anywhere except like these uh, college, not in the 75, oh, right. 75, okay. 77, 70, underground. Late, right. It was underground yeah. college radio stations and things like that. Right. Slowly, it became really popular. Like a band like Devo became nationwide with Whip It, right? And the B-52s. And then, right. And then um, My Sharona by The Knack, that yeah. was New Wave. They had uh, skinny right. ties, right? right? So it's just sure. a lot of it was just rock music with skinny ties, you know, as uh, Billy Joel once said. You know, so you had all this type of music. And then a lot of the punk bands, they, they evolved into New Wave. And you had uh, Joe Jackson, Elvis Costello in the late 70s there. And you had Blondie, like I said. And The right. Clash slowly evolved into more than just a punk band. And the Ramones kept going and things like that. Um, Did you say The Cause? Of course, The Cause. Okay. That was a big uh, right. thing, too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you had bands like The Romantics. Right. Um, yeah, oh, so. Who, yes, it's hard to even remember. Right. So now this brings us all together now. When we're coming up to 1982. Okay. And of course, look at this album that I have here. You can't see it at home, but it's called <laughs> No Wave. It was a classic compilation album uh, by the man to get kids <laughs> to buy uh, New Wave. <laughs> uh, so anyway, and we're going we're gonna to talk about all this stuff. We're going to talk about how we met. We're going to talk about our life and WLIR <laughs> and the 80s and MTV and all that stuff. But right. first, we're going to play some songs. Now, we're going to play a lot of songs today, more than usual, because the music was so good during this time. So we're going to start it off with, I know you love this band, Only You by Yaz. Oh, Featuring get it. Allison Moyer, great singer. Great. Then, great. I think this may be my favorite 80s MTV type song. I'm going to say that basically for every song, so get used to it. But this one I really love. It's Berlin by, no, it's Sex it by Berlin, sorry. <laughs> and then, of course, we're going to play Never Say Never by Romeo Void. Yeah. He's a classics from they 82, uh, most of them around 82, early oh, 80s. Oh, boy, enjoy that. Yes, so enjoy that, and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour. We're doing the best of the 80s, new wave 80s, and you just heard Only You by Yaz, Sex by Berlin, Never Say Never by Romeo Void, all awesome songs from the new wave 80s. <laughs> so now let's get right into it. Let's start where we met, because we met right around. I think right. we met the day <laughs> that um, LAO went on the radio. It's and I'm going to tell you how I remember this now, because <laughs> <laughs> I have to start early, <laughs> that I was very smart, right? So I skipped the grade, smart as I like ass. to every, tell everybody, right? I skipped, but then I was also right. a terrible kid as well. So I stopped going to school for six months. Oh, my so goodness. So I was supposed to graduate um, June that year. Or whatever. Yeah, June, June the previous year. But I didn't go to school, so I couldn't graduate in June. I had to graduate that January. There was graduation so, in January? Well, I graduated, but I didn't go to a ceremony because there was no ceremony. So I just uh, graduated by myself. I was going to so, say. <laughs> so I walked down the uh, hallway at the uh, <laughs> park where I hung out. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, so I graduated in January of 82, that was then. Okay. And I would just bummed around doing nothing wow. for quite some time, just playing in the band at night and doing whatever, <laughs> sleeping all day. So <laughs> I right. finally, I got a job at a supermarket in uh, North Woodmere in Long Island, actually. I lived in right. Queens, but it was close by. So I, uh, the key food in North right. Woodmere. It wasn't North Woodmere. It was, was it Woodmere. Wood, just Woodmere? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So um, that must have been in, because I remember was it, it was. Hewlett? Yeah, whatever it was. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah, it was yeah. Woodmere. Mm. Um, so anyway, Carol Ann will put up the actual address <laughs> and a picture of the store <laughs> later on and the managers and all that. But... <laughs> 
the point is it was kind of warm out when I started. So it must have been like around that springtime. And I remember because I had the job of carry out, right. of course. So I had to stand in front and women <laughs> would say, you who carry my packages, <laughs> please. And I would do that. And I remember standing out there with just a short sleeve shirt on at this time. But it turns out that was the greatest job ever because I was the only one who got <laughs> tips. And I just had to stand outside with my little radio listening to music. And uh, it was great. But now you know who took over that job? They have uh, special people yes, doing that they job. Do. Now, you know? <laughs> that was my job. Now special people do it. But anyway. Oh, <laughs> so, goodness. yeah. And then you started. Do you remember when you started working I there? I do. Do you remember I the started, date? Not the exact date, but I remember that it was... Okay, so I graduated in June of 83. So I started in Key Food October of 1982. Get out of here. This whole story is yeah. Yeah. null and I, void I, I now. I was in my senior year of I high was school. working there that long before you started working there? I don't, yeah, because I didn't start until the fall. Of 82? Of 82. All right, so anyway... Mm -hmm. August of that year, so right around that time, mm -hmm. August of that year, August 2nd was the first day WLAR came on with the mm -hmm. new the new wave. Actually, they didn't call it new wave, though, you know? They called it Dare to be Different, right. new music. Right. Because they felt, I heard this. Now, the guy who uh, was the brains behind all of this was Dennis McNamara, who mm -hmm. was the program director there. And he said, let's do this. Let, no one else is doing this. We could do this. So, um, And he felt new wave was like, the word groovy i heard him say that it was going to be passe and he pictured you know 50 years down the road wlr is still there and you can just play new music new music new music and you're always uh in but if mm -hmm. you're saying new wave then you know new wave is not always going to be there you know you dig where i'm coming from i think well, I don't understand which part you don't understand. Well, new wave, a term. Wave, he or? didn't want to use the phrase new wave. He what wanted to use new music. Oh. Exactly. Okay. So, okay. you well. see, new wave is uh, just a fad. Right. New music is always. Okay. So, that's what he I did. I get it now. Yes. So, they started playing all these kind of music. <laughs> and it, it was just... It came at the right time in the right place. Because like I said, MTV came out the year before okay. and they were just playing whatever. So I think <laughs> that the combination of LIR and MTV, like M LIR gave ideas to MTV of mm -hmm. what songs to play, mm -hmm. right? Because nobody else were playing these songs before. That they would go uh, overseas, they'd go to Europe, to England, because all of this music was coming out of England. Right. Most of it was coming out of England at this time. Right. So LAR would go down there, they'd buy these records, the record companies would be treating them like kings. Here, right. take my album, take my album, you know? So of course they started playing uh, U2, uh, The Police. See, that's another thing where they got in trouble too, because they said they broke all of these bands, and they mentioned bands like The Clash and The Ramones, Owns, where it doesn't make sense because these bands were out way before LIR came about in 82. I guess they, what they mean right. is they so, made them popular. And they kept playing their yeah. music during the 80s right. when no other radio station would. And stuff. See, right. and, and, and that's what you have to understand. This time in 82, you couldn't hear any of this music anywhere. You know, once in a while you'd hear, you know, like the songs I mentioned, like Devo and The Knack on regular radio stations. Yeah. But this underground stuff that no one heard of, they wouldn't play anything like that until it already became popular. Right. So LIR made it popular, and then these other stations would pull it in. Well, the technology wasn't there then. I mean, it was. we take it for granted. Now you want to hear a song, you go to YouTube, or you know, you just play well, it. Well, of course, you know, yeah. You, you buy it. But back then, they actually had to like fly to these countries and wait for that disc to come yeah. out and like and wait for the you know to the, someone to give them the disc and then run you know fly back yeah. to the states and, and put it on it. immediately yeah, yeah. It's a, not, and it uh, it's just like that's a good point too because yeah. lio was kind of like the social media that right. uh, i heard you know they mentioned this during the uh, documentary that uh, you you put it all together. There was these clubs and then mm -hmm. it was like you'd wait to listen to hear this yes. new song. Like, oh my God, hear that song. Yeah. I got to go get the album. Right. And then they'd have commercials about what was happening that weekend, what club you should go right. to, what band was playing where. Like, you know, now you just yeah. open up your social media and you just know everything right, yeah. there is to know. Go on the internet, everything you need to know. But here it was like a community mm -hmm. of all these kids and especially kids on Long Island who always get 
<laughs> felt left out because they weren't part of New York City. Mm -hmm. So they're out there. So this was something that they had for themselves as well. And you have to remember, LIO was a very small station. It was 3,000 watts as right. opposed to the big stations are 50,000 watts. So you could get it on Long, <laughs> Long Island. I could get it in Queens, no problem. I'm not really sure past that how far. Like yeah. Brooklyn, I heard on the documentary they mentioned that Manhattan couldn't get it. Right. So, and that great story <laughs> where Mick Jagger loved the station and he could only get it in his shower. So he had to buy a radio <laughs> so that he could listen to it in the shower. That was great. And then like in New Jersey, certain times if you're sitting up on top of a hill with a special uh, antenna your arms up in the right, air your foot in a the bucket then you could get it you know but <laughs> other than that it was very special to this little you right. know this area and there's other radio stations out there who trying to uh, yeah. take some credit here but we're not giving it to them no. that new york always comes first <laughs> i don't want to offend anybody la is always second behind new york because that station k r o q k rock in la they're trying to claim some stuff here oh, no. but they were definitely second no. and they didn't play the english stuff right. it was said that they played mostly their la bands and things like that and then there's some station for boston claiming it but that no way we're not accepting that it's just lir was the first and for a time the right. only playing this music the beggars in the hangar oh, yeah exactly yeah. everybody's trying to no. uh claim the, credit for it now no. <laughs> but we're not buying it nope it's the 80s here and <laughs> all of this stuff is coming together it just it explodes it's all over mtv now lir is playing it and you got stuff like billy idol the police you too and then like i mentioned too they bring all the clubs into it, too. There's all these Long Island clubs. I want to name some. Do you, let me know if you remember it. If okay. My Father's Place, Spies, um, 007, mm -hmm. Thrush, Spit, yes. Lux, and your favorite, yeah. Malibu. Yeah, that was my place. <laughs> Didn't you go there like every weekend? Every Friday and Saturday, yeah. <laughs> I did. And then, I didn't even have to wait online. All right, now here's the most important question now because we heard during the documentary that uh, U2 broke and that they wow. played all these concerts, mm -hmm. uh, all these bands played all these concerts at Malibu before they were famous. So right. U2 performed at this little club yep. in Long Island called Malibu. Yeah. And Cha-Cha is trying to insinuate that she was there but I she has was. no proof to it i was there and i remember when billy idol was there and i remember when the ramones were there you have any ticket stubs to mm, uh verify this no <laughs> i don't but i would think you didn't need tickets but i would think if you saw you <laughs> too that would be a monumental event that and you i would... do remember seeing them there yeah. i just didn't realize what i was seeing <laughs> 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 yeah, and then, you, of course, you had all these DJs, Donna Donna, Larry the Duck, Donna, Malibu Donna. Sue, yeah. Mark the Shark, Drucker. Right. You know, um, it was yeah. all this stuff going on. And then... Uh, I saw Flesh for Lulu there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you were with me. Maybe. I saw so many concerts in yeah. my life, I can't even remember. And, of mm -hmm. course, they had a relationship with the Ritz in New York City, too. Yeah. That was also one of the best clubs around. I've seen 10 million shows there. I can't remember one of them. <laughs> so, anyway. All right. So, let, let's take a awesome. little break here now. Let's play some more music. Because one of the features on LIR was the Screamer of the Week. Yeah. You recall this? I do. Yeah. So, I'm going to play some Screamers now. How about that? Sure. We're going to play... Look of Love by ABC, which was a screamer, October 1st, 1982. That was the day you started at a key food. Yeah. And then, ah, oh, one of my other favorites, too. This one. Everybody oh, knows this one. Yeah. Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant. Yeah. <laughs> screamer of the Week, April 1st, 1983. And of course, The Stand by The Alarm, yeah. July 2nd, 1982. The Alarm. We're holding that up there right now. So, all right, we're going to play some songs and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Madhouse Magazine, Radio Hour, New Wave 80s. You just heard Look of Love by ABC, Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant, and The Stand by The Alarm here on 474 The Mix. Now, there's other bands I want to talk about, too. What about Gary Newman and Cars? Yeah. That was a big one, too. Well, that like, was a song. It was it. I know, but that song was just so popular. Yeah, you know, there's right. just I'm gonna just randomly yell out songs as I'm thinking about it. Okay. See now, I wanted to go back and play songs that you don't really get to hear that much anymore. I didn't want to play like the psychedelic furs, which I love so much, but oh. you still get to hear them a lot. Right. Which was they, they were became so very mainstream. they were so instrumental yes. during the '80s. Do you and remember of course, seeing them. Of course, I yeah. saw them 15 times. 
Um, and Billy Idol, of course, was huge. Right. And, you know, you had all these different types of music during the 80s. You, you forget that, like I said, when punk turned off into new wave, it also went the other way into hardcore punk, they called it. And you had bands like Dead Kennedy, right. Circle Jerks, Black Fa Flag. So you had that whole underground scene. Then rap was, uh, you know, in its heyday, well, if you right. will. And I remember them playing rap at Malibu. They played um, Run DMC. Oh, of course. Played, yeah, they did do that, and it was really cool. Yes, and then... Um, but the cult, don't forget the cult. Well, of became, course. Yeah. So many bands. And, right. you know, like uh, Depeche Mode, Erasure, yeah. all these types of bands. And was, then right. also in the 80s, of course, you had the hair metal, which uh, Never was got bad. Never that. Yes, yeah. no, mm -hmm. no one should have liked that. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so, and of course, the band that became the biggest band i think the clash that they oh, yeah. they yeah. started out as a punk sure. band and then they evolved into so much more during the 80s and of right. course when uh, combat rock came out that was so good <laughs> rock the casbah yeah should i stay or should i go that was awesome stuff you know and the ramones <laughs> kept playing these guys played all their stuff right. it, was, it was just such good stuff so yeah, oh yeah so we got to talk about this like you said we met Working at this key food yes, in did. Woodmere, Hewlett, Harlem, wherever it was. <laughs> I think it was Hewlett. I'm going to Google it right <laughs> no, now. No, you Google that on All your right. own time. You on put the up break. A yes. I want to so, say. Anyway, we met uh, during these 80s, right. these turbulent times, two <laughs> people who were very different. You're listening to uh, Synthesizer Rock, and I'm listening to uh, Dead Kennedys. And then <laughs> you were on one side of the tracks. I was on the other. You're right. from Long Island. I was from Queens. Right. And um, we became friends. And right. Then we, we got were married. Very, very good. <laughs> well, right, but we were real. We became very good friends. Yes, and then, really for yeah. a long, long time. And we owe everything to Chris Cavalli. I owe nothing to well, him. He's I, a jerk. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, we friends for so many years, yeah. going to all these shows together right, and hanging right. out and stuff, yeah. and then. Uh, we didn't start dating till I moved to New Jersey right. <laughs> much later in 89. Uh, so, wow. yeah, we went all through the LIR years. Right. And in 89, I moved to Jersey. We started dating, and then we got married. Now, here we are. Here we are. So, 30-some-odd years later. So, anyway, let's get back to the music. It all it only lasted five years. It seemed like right. a, a lifetime, but it was only five years that LIR just fizzled out because they lost their license in 1987 yes, now this part of the so documentary it, it, they don't even understand right. it <laughs> that somehow <laughs> some way they lost their license in 1987 and they were forced to go off the air right so but i have to say it was probably meant to be because mm -hmm. the new wave music was kind of fizzling out right. in 87 and turning into by the 90s it was grunge, grunge. so yeah. what would have happened you think if uh, LIR didn't lose its license in 87. Would it have turned to playing grunge? Probably. Because it it's the new music, right? So time. it would just have right. to keep playing new music. Because exactly. yeah. I, I completely lost track when it turned to DRE. I don't even know what it was oh doing because it went somewhere else. So I have no idea what happened with You're that. You're absolutely and right. And it doesn't matter. I forgot about that. Yeah. So we weren't listening to it at that point. No, so we have no idea. And what year did you say that was? That was actually the last show was December 18th, 1987. And you know what the last song was? I'm going to no. tell you. Forever Young by oh. Alphaville. Yeah, and that's yeah. a great song. That's a very nice song, yeah. So it was a time and a place, a five-year period. Yeah. That's really the length of any movement that you know goes on. Like The 60s only lasted five years, basically. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> so, you know, at first glance, right. that wouldn't make sense. And but the 60s musically right. didn't start till 64. By 69, it was turning into something else. Right. You know, it got through the Beatles, mm -hmm. through the psychedelic stuff. And then by 69, you had Manson and Altamont. And then it turned into Alice Cooper and Glam. And that only lasted through punk. So it's just everything's well, it's, cyclical. Yeah, it was a time and a place. <laughs> it was meant to be. Now, it's, it's just a memory. It's a fond memory for everyone who lived through it. It was a great time. Nothing like it will ever happen again. And, uh, you know, we have to feel yeah. lucky that we were a part it. of it. Right. You know? I feel bad for our kids today. They have nothing like it. Exactly. And that is just like you have to think about this. Whenever you think things are bad or mm -hmm. going wrong or something, you won the lottery. You were yep. born in 
uh, right. right close to New York City during the cultural renaissance, if you will. The, yeah. the greatest music and entertainment in the history of the world, basically. Right. That people are born into poverty, dying in the street in countries all over the world. In this country, even, you know. Uh, you right. could have been born into Appalachia. But you're born uh, in Long Island, uh, New York City area. Right. And we no. got to enjoy <laughs> all of this stuff. So, uh, right. you know, we got to feel very blessed uh, to do that. And I do. Yeah. I do feel blessed. And yeah. sometimes, you know, you just think back and it, you, you know, remember people, how good it was. And people make fun of the 80s styles yeah. and things like that, oh, but I it was ha- awesome. Oh. <laughs> Should we talk about What, your high hair? Oh, of course. My high hair, black, down to my hips. Forget it. And then uh, the oh, skinny ties, the, of course. Well, did you wear a skinny tie? I didn't wear a skinny tie. I, I didn't wear a skinny I, tie. I, I was just a basically Ramones type of guy. Yeah, I had jeans, were. t-shirt, and yeah. the black leather motorcycle jacket oh that I wore for like 15 years straight oh when I God. had to peel it off of me. I so I never got into never wanted to look like Madonna emulate Madonna but I was everything about the 80s the high hair I used to do what was called and some of you ladies might remember a piggyback perm where what they is would that? perm it one way and then perm it back the <laughs> other so your hair was like whoosh <laughs> and it was up to the sky and it was just <laughs> and now hence that. that I can't even really get a good like yeah. high <laughs> and of course, but the greatest okay. <laughs> the greatest fashion statement of the '80s, I say, is the flock of seagull guys haircut. Yeah, <laughs> that was the best thing of Very the '80s, nice. right there. That and Jeff Spicoli's black and white shoes that he would beat on his head, <laughs> which you could still get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then, you know, there was uh, such great entertainment. Even the movies, you know, with right. all those pretty Think and pink movies, yes. uh, Fast Times, all these movies played into it. Yep. Everything all together. The MTV. TV was so instrumental of this. You had LIR, remember, you had fashion, oh music, clubs. Remember uh. when you would run home because they were just showing the first airing of a video? <laughs> no, I wouldn't know oh, that. That's Cha-cha. Right. Ooh, sorry. Because we'll have to go oh. into that again. How Queens didn't get MTV yeah, because of corruption. <laughs> that uh, we had to wait. That. Yeah, it was like 1987 before right. we got uh, <laughs> MTV when it was already over. Yeah. Yeah, so Aww. sons of bitches. So anyway, so I you know, that's, that's <laughs> it. That's the history of the 80s and LIR and our time there. And, uh, you know, hope you guys enjoyed it, too. So uh, we're going to smell this album oh, now. Okay. Like I Which said, one? if you're playing at home, it's now time to smell your I'm album. So go get an album, now. any album if you want, and smell it. Because this album right here, you see this again? This is one of those that the rat peed on. So mm. <laughs> that's going to be exceptional. This was ah, a great movie so good. and a great soundtrack, so good. just so you know. Yeah, so we have a whole bunch of albums here. Oh, the defining... Now I'm going to smell this one. Is that the rap piece? Yeah, no. so uh, that's that. So, oh, this is so good. Anyway, let's uh, play some more songs, wrap this show up. What are you playing? We're going to play now another one of my favorites. This what? was Mexican Radio. <gasps> oh, oh how I'm, I'm on a Mexican Radio. radio. By Wall of Voodoo. Yeah. Great name. Then, of course, my other, one of my other favorite bands of Your all time. Your all-time favorite. <laughs> that I love this band so much. And as you can see, most of these songs that I'm playing has a big guitar influence. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I love those uh, synthesizer ones, too. But these are more my favorite. Big Country. <gasps> In, in a big, a big country. country. Exactly. I love that when they do that. It's a great now this song, song I don't one think one hit wonder. Now I'm going to see if anyone knows this song. I just remember this song and I loved it so much. It was called Teenage Enema Nurse. Yeah. You remember this song? I Teenage do. Teenage Enema Nurse in Bondage. <laughs> and it was by nineteen eighty two by the band Killer Pussy. I do remember so, that. Yes, that was a biggie. It was not a scream of the week though, but <laughs> it was a biggie nonetheless. Yeah. So uh And some of the best one hit wonders came oh, out of, of the course. 80s. I have to say that song uh, by the Monroes. What's that all song? All the people. Oh, tell them to yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What do all the people know? What do all the people know? Very yep. good. Very awesome. Good. So, all right, that's it. It's all we have here for the '80s. So go check out that documentary. You can go yeah. on Facebook now. There's a lot of um, Facebook groups right. that are about you. LIR. Yep. Yeah. So uh, look those up. A lot of good stuff there. There's websites. Uh, you can go and check out everything you ever wanted to know about LIR and the '80s. So that's it. All we have here, Madhouse Magazine Radio Hour. See you next week. Check us out, madhousemagazine.com and social media. See you. Let's hear it for the 80s and LIR.